And time now to talk some REITs. And to do that, let's bring in Brian King. He's the CEO of Lotus. Welcome to the show, Brian. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Excellent. Now, I need to talk about the news of the week. We all saw WeWork filing bankruptcy. Like, just with that alone, how does that, does it cast a shadow over REITs? And what's the case to still invest in REITs after seeing that bankruptcy? Yeah, that's a great, great question. I think, um, you know, as we look at uh, WeWork specifically, um, I think the opportunity, what, what that does is it sheds a light on really the opportunity for investments. While many people are, you know, going to have lost money, um, over that particular investment, a lot of money went into um, TI um, improvements for the individual asset. What I think we're gonna see going forward is anytime that uh, there's an opportunity where somebody exits, uh, it, a lot of times it creates an opportunity in the secondary market for you to be able to have a, a great buying opportunity. So somebody's gonna get this at a discount and gonna be able to, in a bankruptcy situation, be able to uh, renegotiate a lot of different lease terms. And I think at the end of the day, it's probably gonna be a, a pretty good outcome for um, a lot of different people involved. Those are some pretty good ideas. <laughs> now, given the current economic climate overall, high mortgage rates, what kind of strategies is Lotus employing to attract more investors to the non-listed REIT and private real estate investment market? Yeah, so for uh, for us, um, you know, we're, we function a lot like an exchange. So um, a, a lot of people use us uh, to be able to buy and sell um, investments. So again, creating liquidity. Typically, these investments are illiquid by nature. Um, and so for what we're trying to do is we're creating liquidity for these, again, traditionally illiquid investments. Um, and so uh, a, a lot of times with a lot of Fed decisions, you, you've seen the Fed go back and forth quite a bit um, as far as their um, opinions on if they're going to raise rates, lower rates. Um, and as we see them kind of vacillate back and forth, I think the, that what that does is that creates a lot of um, volatility in the underlying and people figure, trying to figure out, like, what am I going to do? And listen, at the end of the day, the biggest competitor to real estate right now, believe it or not, is cash, you know, because right now, if I can get a risk-free 5% return, um, there's a lot of people who are, are looking at real estate and other assets as, as having a lot of extra risk. Um, and so, but again, when fear leads decisions, it creates opportunities for others. Mm. Now, you in mentioned liquidity um, and creating it, right? So how are you actually ensuring liquidity in the marketplace and addressing some of those concerns for investors who are seeking liquidity in the current market and conditions? Yeah, so uh, right now, as far as how um, we match buyers and sellers, and, and right now, you, you've probably seen uh, headlines of so many different um, bank institutions, insurance companies that are clearing off spaces in their um, balance sheets to be able to make allocations to secondary markets, mm -hmm. um, particularly secondaries in real estate. Um, again, as some people are having to make an exit, it creates an opportunity for somebody to come in and, and buy it at, at potentially a, a lower price point, being to buy that at a discount so we've seen a lot of banks you know again clear off balance sheet for this um, and so again for us we have a large network of buyers mostly institutional in nature um, we have you know some family offices accredited investors that also participate but it's a lot of institutions um, that are buying on our marketplace today um, and can um, be able to, to buy all kinds of different assets so let's talk about large funds within this space. Now, how do the large funds like, how does the large funds like Blackstone's REIT and Starwood's REIT impact the Lotus marketplace in terms of trading volume and investor interest? Yes. Yeah, so for Blackstone um, and Starwood, you mentioned, you know, for, for those funds, uh, they they actually do have a liquidity valve. But something that's you know kind of been in the headlines quite a bit over this last year has been the fact that they ha they're limited as to how much um, in redemptions they can meet. And and some of those funds received a lot of redemptions, multiple billions of dollars worth of requests to be able to have an exit. Um, but because of the limitations as a part of the fund structure, they couldn't meet those. So what we did is we um, listed those funds on our marketplace to be able to allow buyers to come in and provide that liquidity where the fund can't do it. Um, again, for us, 
We love the opportunity to partner with various sponsors because um, at the end of the day, the fund probably isn't the best source to be able to provide that liquidity. Sometimes they have to do unnatural things to be able to provide liquidity, maybe sell an asset that they didn't want to sell or, or have to raise additional capital in a way that provides terms that normally they wouldn't. Um, so, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, real estate isn't supposed to be a liquid asset. And, you know, the way that I kind of look at that and I say, listen, Microsoft technically isn't a liquid company. The only reason why it is, is because it's traded on a secondary market. And so similarly, if you have a secondary market for real estate related investments, um, you know, it creates that liquidity as well. I mean, that's really the strongest point of this, the secondary market. So tell me a little bit more about how you guys have infused this into your growth strategy. Yeah. So, you know, again, we function a lot like an exchange. We're registered as an ATS. Uh, for those who don't know what an ATS is, it's a lot like an exchange. Um, an exchange is self-regulated. Um, an ATS um, outsources its regulation to FINRA. So therefore, we're also a broker dealer. Um, and so for us, it's a it's the key catalyst of what we're doing. And I've spent my whole career building marketplaces and being a part of um, BATS, which is now um, owned by SIBO and the New York Stock Exchange. So building lots of different marketplaces um, but for us, you know, building a marketplace to create liquidity for traditionally illiquid investments um, has really been uh, a, a big part of our growth strategy. All right. We're going to have to leave it there. Brian King, CEO of Lotus. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Schwab Network today.